Oh, and we're live. <laughs> uh, good evening um, and welcome to day four of the virtual tasting week. Um, and tonight it's the turn of Cadden Heads, which is Scotland's oldest independent bottler. Uh, we'll introduce ourselves first. I'm Cameron McGeehy, the sales manager for Cadden Heads. Uh, to my right, to my left, sorry, actually, we have Lewis Anderson, who is the shop manager for the Cadden Heads shop in Campbelltown. Evening. And to my right, we have the brains and the brawn of Cadden Heads, uh, Jenna McIntosh, uh, our sales executive. Now, first of all, thank you all for attending tonight, or viewing us tonight, sorry. Um, we've got six fantastic drams to, to showcase. We will talk a bit about Cadden Heads, what we do, um, and I'll try and look at the comments as much as possible. We can answer as many questions as we can, and we'll also take a bit of time at the end to answer some questions too. Now, unfortunately, our fellow sales colleague, Mitch Graham, couldn't be with us tonight. Um, he's feeling a bit under the weather tonight, so... And um, we wish him all the best and hope he makes a full recovery soon. But Lewis was very kindly uh, stepped in. So we've got the finest super sub since Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer. Big boots to fill. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I think we'll, we'll get started with the drams and we'll just have a talk about them. Um, I think Lewis, you'd like to introduce the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I was kindly asked at the last minute to step in. Uh, and I've also been asked to um, introduce the first dram, which I've got um, it's an introduction to the original collection, which is a new collection from Cadden Heads. A lot of you guys will remember um, the Cadden Heads small batch collection, which was where well, you have the authentic collection, which is always single cask, always cask strength, and only available from a Cadden Heads shop. Um, previously, we had the small batch, which was a mix of two or three different casks, maybe slightly more, um, married together and then bottled and distributed to cabin head shops and to importers around the world. Um, the small batch has now been discontinued in favour of the original collection. And the main difference is um, it's still a marrying of different casks from the same distilleries. For example, the first one we have is a Glenrothes 23-year-old. Um, so this is a batting of four different casks, uh, three bourbon casks and one, three bourbon hogsheads and one sherry butt, if I remember correctly. Yep, correct. Yep. Um, and it has been reduced down to 46%. Um, so without further ado, we'll take a little yeah. taste of this. Cheers, guys. Slans, Slans. Folks. Fine. What did Matt? I dated it before you. Yeah. <laughs> it's going. Well, this is actually this is this is the second time I've been able to do an original. We actually had to get another tasting set. Oh, Jen had finished it before we started. So. <laughs> I know. I know. It's mine. Were going, mine were going down a little bit as well. I'm sure she did that. Mine. Um. So yeah, the original collection. Um, replacing the small batch collection it is a, it's an exciting change for cabin heads, um, if not slightly controversial as well. Um, but what's um, what's life without a little controversy? I would say you can't agree on. Yeah, I think um, with, with what we're trying to do is we're bringing back the essence of independent bottling. You know, um, what an independent bottler does, it gives you can buy casks from other distilleries, and what you're doing is you're giving your own interpretation of whiskey that the distilleries will do. And from this, um, we do a lot of vetting for it. Um, we went through multiple cast samples. <laughs> Jenna can back me up here. Yeah, uh, it's a hard job. It's, <laughs> it's not just quite as easy what people might think, sitting back, sampling whiskies all day. Um, there's a lot to it. Um, it's it's finding the right balance. <laughs> <laughs> this one in particular is about 60% bourbon, 40% sherry. Uh, and it's just finding that balance and what we enjoy, what we think. If, if we bottle this, will our customers enjoy it? Um, mm. And the original collection as a whole, for me, I remember sitting, we'd done the tasting notes just before lockdown um, via Zoom. Um, and I can remember we were all sitting just enjoying the whiskies. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it can make it a little bit even more difficult because you are enjoying them that much. It's like, what, what, what's mm. in this one? I think as well, we've got a 23 year old from Glenrothes and it's, it's, it's lovely, it's a stunning starting dram in my opinion. It's got the oiliness, it's got the, the lovely mix of the bourbon and the sherry cast as well. 
where sometimes you can get over dominant with sherry or yeah. over like maybe an older whiskey can sometimes be a bit lose a bit of its excitement can get a bit maybe lifeless but i think this has still got a lot of character it's absolutely gorgeous and the thing with it too it's it's designed for all whiskey drinkers you know it's yeah. you know we've got different ranges we try and accommodate from you know cast strength drinkers we've got the 46 percent we do single casks we do blending you know we we do they blend sorry so it's to try and accommodate for everything you know there's um it's such a versatile drink whiskey there's no right or wrong between it and we don't you know we, we don't discriminate you know finishes second maturations um you know, different styles of casks different um strengths single casks batches you know there's no absolutes with us or we would be sith so um yeah I don't know where that's come from it's gonna get worse <laughs> um, the the the, the fa my favorite thing as soon as we heard about the original collection being announced it was it was going to be changing it was not going to be cash trend maybe 46 percent from a kind of shop's perspective um be it in, in edinburgh or campbellton or any of the shops um we've got we would get a whiskey we'd get a whiskey anorax coming in that obviously they want cash strength and chill filtered natural color we've got all of that you'll still get it from all the authentic collection range but if ever anyone stepped into the shop who was fairly new to whiskey um who didn't really it, it was it was looking to experience um drinking whiskey for the first few times and they're really starting to get into it um but it can be quite a daunting i imagine it would be quite but it actually was quite daunting for me originally starting drinking whiskey when you step into the cabin head shop and you see it was a board in edinburgh and you see 59 percent 57 percent 56 percent i think oh it's just what it's all like when you start going so when you it was really good for us to have to be able to kind of share something with customers who, who haven't drank much whiskey before yeah. and it was more approachable for them we, we've, we've all been uh, we all travel we've all been to rescue shows and um, what i noticed is especially uh, in the uk last year we had done quite a few shows in the uk um behind the stand a lot of people would come up and they'd say oh it's cash strength it's cash strength and then they, they, they chase it oh that's that that's too much for me <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and and just just um, diluting that slightly for them maybe to forty six percent is is drinkable, is enjoyable. You get all the flavours among that. Um, it really opens up the nose. Yeah. There's apricots, yeah. mango. So there's some mango. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's it's a, a, really dense. Yeah. I, I think the main thing is, is what we do with all our products is that it's about the flavour. You know, if if it doesn't taste good at uh, anything, we wouldn't we wouldn't bottle like that. And I think this one, 23 years old too. It's actually all the the, the casks we used were distilled in 1996. We obviously had basically once we 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 chosen the composition we worked to use. Um, we then once it was vatted together, we then put them into the tire casks, basically holding vessels, because we had the flavour composition that we wanted. Um, so we kept them in the warehouse. But obviously, this was meant to get released before lockdown. Um, it spent a bit more time in the warehouse. Uh, it's it's not really going to take any more flavouring from the casks, but it's brought itself closer to maybe like 24 years old now. Um, yeah. So it, it wasn't too far off it. Um, we've actually got a question here, starting off, um, from Morton, Morton in Denmark. Good to see you. Um, Morton's usually in Campbellton more than we are. <laughs> um, and we'll get that game of golf sometime. But he's asking... Since we can't come to Campbelltown, will you bring the warehouse to the cabinet shops if you've done as you've done before? Well, it's probably a definite, but travelling just now is is a bit of a, a no go. Um, we've got to look after ourselves, the company, and the community. Um, so I think at the moment, until it's safe to to, to start travelling again, um, we'll maybe look at doing something else. We'll not make any promises at the moment. Um, but we, we can definitely look at doing more, looking into the warehouse. You know, as at Cadden Heads, we're always keen to yeah. to help everyone taste and get bottlings out there. Um, and, and there's plenty to come. The future's looking bright. Uh, just give us a chance to get back on our feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, in case anyone uh, has not been tuned in this week as well, just, just to go over, uh, we, we actually closed for the company itself 
closed down completely all operations in uh, in March and we reopened again in early August. Um, so we're, we're getting there. We've managed to keep up. Um, well, it's four months without any operation. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, we're, you're trying. You're almost starting from a from a clean slate again. Yeah. Um, so it, it's been trying to fit everything in, including this. And I think like the likes of the virtual tasting we're doing tonight. Um, it's I hate using this term. But it's going to be the, the the norm for a while anyway, and it could maybe be doing a like, warehouse tastings on the road, eh, virtually. Virtually, yeah, yeah, we can never look at yeah. it. It's just um, we'll need to get our friend Nathan to <laughs> <laughs> direct us in the the right path because um, I'm absolutely useless with technology. But so far, so good this week. Eh? And seems to be we managed happy. to get our Instagram posts up. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, I never done Instagram. Just <laughs> I think I might, I might be looking at comments. I've actually got the game on. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, we've actually got another comment here uh, from Colin Sim, uh, who wants to thank Lewis for emptying his wallet again. It's a pleasure, as uh, always. <laughs> did, did he empty it by taking it out of your pocket first, or was it a genuine transaction? Nah, it fell out, and I, I just never yeah. mentioned that it did fall out. Yeah, I um, it's been a clean slate. So I noticed that actually when after we reopened after the lockdown, and obviously every other countries they've been in lockdown as well. And mm -hmm. if you're in lockdown, people's whiskey stash takes a hit. And I think a lot of people were starting again from a clean slate, and yeah. joining lots of phone calls, lots of emails, looking for a restock, replenish. Um, I think as well with the company, what what they did to you. Um, I mean, all the staff, you know, we were, were it was very. Yeah, we were all given full pay for the for the time that we were off and the senior management went back and they basically put in a plan to try and help safeguard you know the the, the working environment here you know because for it to start up again you know the whole company like to the bottling hall and for the distilleries or sister companies at Springbank and Glen Gale you know, you've got the production there so there's a huge effort to try and make the working environment as safe as possible and they did a lot of work and, and spent a lot of money in trying to do that. So even when we came back, you know, we, we had to try and get the, the plan in place for us to how to continue, what, what to do next. And you're four months behind. So well, I'm normally four months behind, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I was eight months behind than we normally are. But uh, so we are starting to get there. And obviously the demand, you know, people were very, uh, at the start, you know, it's like, oh, it's okay. But they were starting to get thirsty, so we're trying to get as much whiskey out to you as possible, as quickly as possible too. I think even uh, if I remember correctly, during lockdown, someone was looking for samples, and we had all, well, it was maybe for the original collection, and, oh, have you got a sample of this? We need it for something. No, I've drank, drank all mine. Oh, I've drank all mine as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that's fine. We're all going back. <laughs> it's fair to say it's probably finished mine before the lockdown. So, yeah, it's locked up. But blamed a lot on that. That's the. Uh... Yeah. Oh, it was good to us. Excellent. This is going down really well. It's, yeah, a, great, it's yeah. a great start on whiskey. It really is. It's a great way, you know, it, it, with the lineup too. We've had, obviously, this is the fourth day in the week. Um, we've had the Hazelburn Long Road until Cairn Day. So they've all been excellent tastings, uh, tremendous whiskey. So it's obviously it's a tough act to follow. Um, Hopefully we'll manage. Oh, <laughs> Starting off okay anyway. But a lot of people from a lot of countries here. See Benjamin as well. Hi Benjamin. Um Shizuki san. Edwin. So we'll put people from your, all your technology can pronounce it. So. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> of Bram as well. I can pronounce Bram. That's <laughs> Ruth, I can I can pronounce that as well. <laughs> Brilliant. No, so um but yeah, let us know in the comments. I'm going to go back and watch this later on tonight, hopefully. Torture uh, yourself. Yes. <laughs> Make sure I'm still, still looking okay. Uh, <laughs> I've been worried about it all week. I think we all have. It, it's, it's, it's a bit funny doing a taste in front of her. We, we've been doing ones recently um, where you're maybe interacting with somebody, whether it's been like with one person doing a, you know, commentating. But this is the first time we've done it. Well, certainly I've done a taste in where... It's just the three of us speaking into a camera. And I'm not sure if it's a trick by Nathan. We're not actually live and we're just, <laughs> we're just here just doing nothing. It feels weird. <laughs> it feels weird. We're not going, right, everyone, quiet, quiet. That's, that's, that's yeah. normally three drums, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. No, the, <laughs> some of the tastings. But You'll actually hear this today. You actually have to listen. Yeah. There's, um, there's obviously no substitute. They're, 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 it's not the same as the, you, you, the people coming to Campbelltown for the festival. 
it's huge, not just for us, but actually the whole town itself. You know, and you know, the, the week is, it's always usually, well, not always, but the weather's usually pretty good during that time. And the, the, the town itself is always buzzing, especially Thursday night too. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to mention it again. But Thursday night's usually the night in the feathers, um, the grab a granny night. Although every night. we draw the short straw every year because the Springbank team have done their tastings on the on the Thursday, so we've still to do ours on the Friday normally. Is that early on Friday morning? Yeah. And then you you arrive at the, uh, Mitchell's Glendale, and you think, where is everyone that helps set up? And they're all still in their beds. <laughs> yeah. Even though every year they say, "Don't worry, this year we'll be there early." <laughs> Never happens. Anyway, we'll we move yeah. on to the next round. Yeah. Just was it you that was, was it yourself that was telling me? Um, Oh, about the, about the original collection. So obviously, if, with all the samples that you're trying, say, you get 10 or 15 different mm -hmm. cask samples that could potentially win the battle. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like basically, what we'll, what we'll do is, so, you know, say you, you take samples of a certain, say for this Glen for instance, you maybe yeah, took, yeah. say, 10 samples. You know, So mm -hmm. we will, originally, what we do to start off with is we'll grade each one. So there'll be maybe one we go off. Maybe that's not so great. It might work in the vatting, though. So you're kind of great. That's maybe the base one, second best. And sometimes you'll actually come across one where you go, that is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And that's where we will put that to our authentic collection. Because you, you go, that's got to be a stand up in its own. You know? mm -hmm. um, we're, we're buying, like, we've got, we own thousands of casts. We've got like, lots of samples to try. And the romantic notion would be that every single one. It's an absolute stunner. But you, you, we, we've had days where we've had 40 samples in front of us and it's we've came out going, well, there's nothing there. No, I don't mean that they're, they're bad, but they're just not ready yet. Even yeah. the biggest name distilleries out there, some yeah. things we've, we've tasted mm -hmm. once and we've agreed, no, it's, it's not quite ready yet, or maybe it needs re mm -hmm. Um So, so there, there is a continuous process throughout. Yeah, a very patient tasting panel. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, with Glen Rothes in particular, with some of the ones, well, we've bottled it quite a lot uh, in general, just can heads as a whole. And at cask strength, a lot of them come out at like fifty-five to sixty percent. But uh, Glen Roth, it tends to be a really, really light spirit. And it's like and as a style on its own, and they're official bottlings as well. They're you sherry quite a lot, but with a light spirit at cask strength, fifty-eight, fifty-nine percent, sometimes that can kind of take over. Mm -hmm. Uh, but taking down to forty six percent, that definitely works with a whiskey like going off this. As I, as I say, it doesn't matter with the, the strength; it's just the flavour, really. Yeah, you know, yeah. If it tastes good, it tastes yeah, good. Exactly. We wouldn't yeah. bottle it if it, we did the reduction and it wasn't good. We wouldn't have bottled it. You know? And everyone that we did, that did there, there was maybe times where we tried a reduction and it actually better originally. Yeah. So we wouldn't have done that. And with this, we've got a lot more chance to play about with whiskies too. You know. Um, the light yeah, of yeah, even your mix of yeah. you know, this is authentic, this is original. We also we're, we're playing about with different cast types as well, and we'll, Jenna briefly mentioned about um, re racking, which we'll probably maybe go into a bit yeah, um, later on. But uh, with that, we're, we're we're doing a ton of re racking just now, so we can get different flavours that you might not normally get from from a from a particular distillery, where we can maybe vat you know a couple of different uh, cast types. It always seems to be it's got maybe one or two, but we've done ones in the past, maybe well, our, our uh, friends at Springbank have for maybe three, four different casks. Mm -hmm. you know, so we can have a bit of fun with that as well. Play around, see what tastes good, and hope for the best. That's, that's our motto <laughs> in life, I think. <laughs> the whiskey industry is that Brilliant. So I think we'll move on to dram number two. And this is our the one that we did for the virtual tasting, the bottling deal. It's a bottling day. This is the bottle we did for the virtual, <laughs> for the open day for the virtual tasting week. I got there eventually. Um, and this one is an un, is from an unnamed space site distillery. And I've tried to train myself because I know I'm probably, I'm not going to say it, <laughs> but I've always got this fear that I will. And I might be looking for a new job if I do. Um, 18 years old. And it's a cast strength of 52.3%. Now, we've used two casts for this. We've used a bourbon and a sherry, and we've added it together. Um, again, similar as to what we're talking about with the, with the Glenrothes. Yeah. Um, we, we, we got together, we got, um, I think, roughly, I think maybe 10 samples. 
And what we had, we had five of the same age. So this was all distilled in 2001. So we had five bourbon samples and five sherry samples. I'm doing the handsy thing again. Um, <laughs> so we had five of each. Again, the, the first thing we'll do is we'll grade each one. And the same thing happened with that way. There was one of this particular distillery, which was just outstanding. It was one of the sherry ones. Uh, and we thought that straight away, you know, right on the, the sample, I think that's going to be one that we bottle in the future, possibly the near future, but we can't say just yet. Um, and we graded the bourbon ones too. So we, we tried, from the other ones that we had left, the four sherry and the five bourbon, we then tried maybe putting all the bourbon together, see what that was like, and then all the sherry. And to be honest with you, the, the bourbon was actually okay. Um, just maybe it was, it was lacking something. It just wasn't. And the sherry was maybe too sherry dominant, we thought anyway. Uh, it, it, it didn't have the kind of complexity we're looking for. It was just, yeah. it just had too much. It was just too much of a sherry hit, which which can be nice, of course. But we wanted something a bit more. So we thought, well, then the next obvious thing to do is, is to to go for the sherry and the bourbon together. And with this one, we actually thought, well, the, the first place to start off with was go with the next base sherry. Obviously, we're not using the first one, and go with the base bourbon. And it, it was fairly nice. It was okay. Um, Something we're, we're slightly disappointed in it. It just didn't taste that good. Well, you think the best and the best is going. Yeah, to yeah. You think yeah. that that's going to be, you know, you, you would think that would be the, the, the sort of obvious thing to do. It actually turns out, I think it was the third best bourbon and the second best sherry. <clears throat> oh, sorry, what should have been the third best? So it'd be the fourth best bourbon. The third <laughs> best Here sherry. we go. Here we go. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. And his cousin. And his cousin. <laughs> and his cousin's dog and whatnot. A that was actually the base composition it, it worked better it was like wow and with this one as well like it's got a really nice kind of like almost it. yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's got that kind of like creamy kind of strawberry kind of nose it's just vanilla ice cream all mm. over it on the nose sweet very sweet yeah that's i actually managed to obtain a, a bottle of that once the initial sales went and surprising, well, surprising to me, this one's still available at Cattenhead Dog Show. <laughs> <laughs> Always working. And uh, Cam, can you tell us why it's unnamed? Yes, we're not allowed to name it. <laughs> <laughs> um, some distilleries, you, you, when you buy casks or some distilleries don't let you, but sorry, I'll start again. Sometimes when you buy casks, the paperwork on it states that you can't name the distillery. And that's literally some distilleries like to have protection of the brand that you know because you, you could have somebody just bottling it you know and it, and it could be rubbish you could it could basically be detrimental to like the, the, the yeah exactly a to be honest with you nowadays all most independent bottlers you know, anything they're bottling is, is, is all good stuff too but this particular distillery um wasn't so much they don't really let anybody bottle it we may be allowed to bottle some, some. <laughs> maybe. Um, well, that's it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> we may or may not. <laughs> so, uh, so it's a tricky process. It is a tricky time. process, yeah. yeah. And even then, I almost said the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, it's a really nice uh, whiskey from from a, a space out still. <laughs> We're within, within, <laughs> within the region of space out at 18 years old. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, it's, it smells like an older whiskey as well. Definitely. It's, it's, I, I see it as a kind of Christmassy dram mm. and a bit brown sugar, fruit and that chocolate, my mum's favourite. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love, like, with, with me, like, I, I more, I prefer maybe towards a bourbon or refill sherry kind of cast to my kind of, and I think that's kind of perfect balance. It's not, it's not totally sherry dominant. You've got the sort of vanilla as a kind of fudge mm -hmm. that you'll get from what a bourbon matured whiskey as well but it's got that as you said it, it, no you, you did old jedi mind trick i've got the, the kind of christmas key kind of yeah it's good it's just a good balance but it's a good full body drum yeah. there's there's a lot to it but not too much and um, it's not weak in any sense yeah. but you're going to get flavor you're going to get a nose and a nice finish yeah definitely that one as well. just adding a wee bit of water to me the spoon with the max bothy thanks oh. for the inspiration 
You can tell he's not in the full Cadden Head side. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any of you watched the, the there was an amazing piece on the Monday night with our uh, colleague David Allen, um, the director of sales for Springbank. But at one point he was adding water and he took his glass and dipped his finger in it. <laughs> I was about to say we're far more sophisticated at Spring uh, uh, Cadden, <laughs> sorry. So we've got the pipettes, apart from the man that let us down with the spoon in there. <laughs> To be fair, he gave us the pipettes. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. an offering, a piece of it. Okay, <laughs> I'd like to point out that we have our own water jugs as well. <laughs> I don't like sharing. <laughs> We've got a comment from Lars Lowry, um, Hoiberg. Uh, you're doing great, guys. It takes some getting used to, but everyone who's joined us is thoroughly enjoying this. Well, thanks very much. Thank you. It's very kind. It, yeah. um, it's early days yet. You might want to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but another question, um, where does Lewis get his really tight hipster jeans from? <laughs> you make that up. <laughs> oh, well, funnily enough, they're not jeans, they're corduroys, I'll tell you know. Carmen just wants to know, he's been dying to ask him all night. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, actually. Um, Ori Lutsky, good to see you, Ori. Uh, wanted some haggis and nachos <laughs> and his taste in fact. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> Just to make you jealous, I tagged his match was a couple of weeks ago and you were spot on. Um, there's a comment, we'll, we'll, we'll go in more on the re racking in, uh, in a bit, but just while we've got a few questions here. Uh, Gorn, uh, good to see you, Gorn. No quizzes tonight, thankfully, because you'll probably win it anyway. Uh, he's asking, how long do you re rack for normally? How long is a piece of string, really? Um, it depends, Gorn. Um, we'll, we'll, there's one whiskey in particular we'll talk about a bit more in the re-racking process, but some we'll do for multiple years, just depending. We, we need to do a lot of testing. Um, for those that don't know, re-racking is when we've maybe, we've basically we've moved one the spirit from one cask to another. And the reason we've done that is pretty much that we feel that the cask it's in is not helping influence it, it, or it needs a boost. It's maybe a third fill or a fourth fill and it's just lacking yeah. life. It just needs a wee kickstart, whether we re-rack it into another bourbon cask or maybe it's a sherry or a rum cask. Um, so there's lots of ways of, of re-racking, but it is just moving the spirit from pouring it out into another cask. Now, it depends on which kind of, what, what type of cask we use. Sometimes you'll get ones which are a bit more potent, which will take to the spirit very quickly. Now, ideally, it would be great to have them as long as possible, so you're going to give more of a... It, it, it gives more integration, but sometimes you can get great flavourings, you know, maybe six months, a year, 18 months. Um, I mean, we even some we, we tried recently, we, we, we took samples just to sort of test how they were going on uh, with some of the, the fresh sherry cast we did a year yeah, ago. Yeah, I remember that. And we did, like, obviously, it wasn't just the pH. The pH is obviously going to have a bit more effect. It's got that, that kind of strong, stronger characteristics. It's, but there were some of the, like, the manzanillas, the Orozos. Yeah. Orozos all, well, it's a bit stronger yeah. too, but... I couldn't believe it when you showed me those samples when they came out. I couldn't believe them. <laughs> I, think you, I think you said it's been in there for like four months. You said, and you showed that's me, this was, this was the yeah. sample before it. And it was like, yeah. Well, that's well, you, what, that's what happens young. when you send the director of production over to Spain, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be tall, isn't it? <laughs> I think he just walked cast a share, to be honest with you. I don't think he's actually <laughs> So he says it anyway. Yeah. Um, but then again, when, when we're re racking, we'll, we'll maybe go into more detail. But like, so we're re racking into different rum barrels and things, and obviously, Cadden Heads bottle rum as well. Um, so we know the sort of spirit that comes out of, of these casks. And as soon as we've used it, we think, oh, well, what, what could we use this? Maybe we need something a bit. I'll, I'll not say my description. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say dirty or oily. Or, and it, it works with the, you kind of think, well, what's this spirit like? What's it needing? What's, what does it need um, just to give it that little kick start? Um, and we'll leave it in there. And as Cameron says, we'll test it, take a sample every so often uh, and see how it goes. Yeah. So. I mean, the vast majority, if it's Jane, I kind of pointed on it a bit earlier. The vast majority of casts we get are going to be when they're selling them. It's going to be maybe multiple used bourbon casks, you know, maybe second or third fill, um, which can be absolutely tremendous if you do longer term maturations, which we do. We have got a huge amount of stock, and we've got the ability because we are Scotland oldest the independent bottler. We've been buying casks for years that we do lay on stock for a long time. 
But even this, this is 18 years old. 18 years is quite a long time. I was just, I was just a boy back then. Was, I just turned 18 last week. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so it's 18. But I think that, that's a good point, though. I was 18, is, 18 years ago. That's to be quite thing of that. Then. Is, you know, we're based, we're based in Campbelltown, um, sister companies with Springbank. So, so we use, or we, we have the ability, we've got the warehousing and we use their space. So we've got the ability to get our cast to Campbelltown. We've got the team here to look after them, draw the samples. We can taste them, uh, re-wrap them as we like. We can sit them in the warehouse for three, four years, even longer. Um, we've, we've got the ability to buy casts in young and mature them for a long time. Uh, we're, we're not in any hurry at all. And I think the three of us, even personalities, the most laid back people you'll probably ever meet. Maybe not come. <laughs> 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 Try to make you feel better. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> me and Lewis probably stress you out, but uh, I know. How yeah. much <laughs> you think you're laid back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've we'll, we'll, we'll we'll got else. a lot of time in our hands. Well, <laughs> yeah. don't get me wrong, we're busy people, but uh, as a company, we've, we've got the time, we've got the space, and the ability to do it. So. We're, we, we take full advantage of that. We're not in any hurry to bottle anything. Yeah, ah, you, you can't rush. You can't rush quality as well. And if, if you've got the ability to wait, um, then well, yeah, all the time's on your side. It's just a, a case of waiting until that specific whiskey, that specific cask, is ready to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I what's what's the old tune? Um, oh, we've got I, it written on the board through there. I test the best. Do you, no, no. Um, uh, bottle when. Exceptional, not acceptable, or something like that. All right. Uh, yep. That's a new. Yeah, that's a new yeah, cabinet. Right. Ah, yeah. <laughs> that old one. No, but you're you're quite right. You're absolutely spot on. Um, Monique, hey, good to see you, Monique. <laughs> Is Cameron sitting on a pillow? I think I've been stitched up here. <laughs> No. Yeah, yeah, I actually am. But just for my bad back, not for the height reasons. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie, it was for the height. Um, well, it's kind of pseudo -name and, and I've looked at the comments as well, and I see Kuhn Brown. Good to see you, Kuhn, as well. He's posted the link on to buy the bottles, so we'll give you some commission for that next time you're in Campbelltown. <laughs> Thanks, Kuhn. We get commission. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Are we supposed to get commission here? <laughs> <laughs> Just like the cat out of the bag, haven't it? <laughs> uh, well, anyway, back back to the actual whiskey, I suppose. But the but the unnamed space side distillery, you know, um, I, I I honestly couldn't believe that was still available. And if it's still available after this taste, I'm probably going to try and buy another one. Actually, um, unfortunately, we don't get staff this company's ones. Well, I think that's a it's maybe one that needs to be tested um, by everyone that's taking part in, in the tasting. Um, just because it's unnamed. I think maybe has an influence. Probably. But possibly. You'll get to know us. Um, this is this is a really good whiskey. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a crack and dram. Um, slightly biased, obviously, but um, <laughs> but but it is a really really good whiskey, and, and it shows you as well that even like mixing casts together, like as I talked about it, that it wasn't the best individual casts that went into, it, but those were the two best components which made yeah. the best overall whiskey. Um, and it is strange, even even when, when I first started um, working here, I always found it strange the difference between two sister casks, what they could do. You know, sometimes a single cask is amazing on its own. And then you could get two not bad single casks, but maybe not as, as good as the first one. And what it would do is it kind of mellow it out, you know, it would sort of in, help it integrate it. Yeah. It maybe wasn't didn't give it as much of a harshness. And it, it was fantastic. But just showed you that sometimes you're not even they weren't the best individually, but they made the best um the best play batting, sorry. I remember doing a, a sister cast tasting uh, but one of the cocaine and open day bottles. And it was one of the first ones I'd done. So we had about twelve samples um up in the boardroom one afternoon uh, taste one after the other. And I was just amazed at how this, different each yeah, one yeah. can taste. Yeah, okay, it's cocaine and they've got a similar profile, but it, it just shows you that they're all filled on the same day, one after the other, but in a different 
different cask. Okay, they might all be bourbon, but it's it's amazing just how how different. Yeah, yeah they're probably they're, they're the, the same. It's not even like different wood. You know, it would be the same yeah. wood as you know. It, it's uh -huh. the same type. It, it's the same, and it they can be. It is. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So well, whether you ever get the opportunity to do that, yeah. give it a go. But whether you do or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, Bob Miller thinks Nathan and Lewis should swap places after Dram 3. Great idea, he says. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan's got his fairy thumb up there. Much appreciated, Bob. <laughs> Nathan's too busy watching the football back there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even realise you guys were tasting whiskey. <laughs> uh, Nathan's a Celtic fan and I think they, they were, they've lost. Oh, two all. Two all, two all. They've lost two all. The last two, the last two, <laughs> you actually if I can. Anyway, we're going to be back to the Um Who else have we got here? Yep, Ruth remembers grab a granny there. <laughs> this is becoming a theme list for the whole week. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Excellent. So will we move on to drum number three? Drum number three, let's mm. go. Um, so <clears throat> next up we have Scotland's, as I believe, someone will probably correct me, uh, Scotland's first and oldest whisky distillery, though now it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, so it opened in 1772, and uh, I remember reading an interesting story that they, they found that out. They didn't have the exact facts, but they found that out from one of the warehouses that was built, and it was um, inscribed in one of the bricks in a warehouse wall. So. They went with that date, as far as I know, or something similar. Uh, I don't go too much into detail because <laughs> there's always someone that will correct you. Yeah. So um, I believe, or I I think, you know, that, that's the terms that, that we'll go with just now. So um, we're going to the closed distil distillery, Little Mill, and it's a 1991 uh, cask, 29 years old at 48.1%. Um, so, as I mentioned, if, if anyone doesn't know, but I'm pretty sure everyone that's joined this tasting will probably have a rough idea uh, that Little Mill, closed distilleries are hard to come by. Um, Cadenhead's being Scotland's oldest independent bottler, we bought casks, we buy casks continuously, um, probably just as much as we bottle them um, throughout the year. We try to replace them uh, as many as we bottle. Uh, so. Being the oldest independent bottler means that we do have stocks of closed distilleries. Um, this one in particular closed in 1997, or it was dismantled in 1997, and um, unfortunately was then, the remains was then ruined and burned down in a fire in 2004. Uh, Little Mill is a traditional light lowland whiskey, um, but they also produced Two other whiskies, um, Dumbuck and Dunglass. Um, Dumbuck, I believe, was the heavily peated, and Dunglass was a full body. But these two whiskies were discontinued in 1972. So I, I haven't tasted them once myself, but obviously I know where Dunbuck is and Dunglass roundabout always rang the bell. <laughs> you're, the K, you're the KFC. Well, that, that's, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> Yeah, down glass round about KFC. <laughs> but yeah, so what we've got tonight is a, a nice little mill. And I'll, I'll be honest, not all little mills are my favourite. Just because it's closed doesn't mean it is the best. Um, but this one is it's one of the, the better, if not the best one I've tasted in, in quite a while. It's got that musty earthiness. Yeah. Um, woody in a good way. I, I don't yeah, like saying yeah. woody, but it's not, it's not overly... Yeah, you get you get this the two the two far with yeah, um, it's, this, this it's grand, just kind of like papaya kind of bananas. Yeah. It's, the pencil shavings kind of you've been on a date, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's that kind of, that's one of my favourite tastes of that. that <laughs> okay. Pencil shavings on you. Yeah. It, it well, reminds you of primary school. Primary school, school days, yeah. Wish that it go to primary school. <laughs> <laughs> the glory days. <laughs> But it, it's 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 gorgeous drama. You know, we, we've tried ones in the past. That maybe when you've got a closed distillery, the the hype is always going to be, you know, oh, it's going to be amazing. Or it, sometimes it can be. Exactly. Yeah. But the, the the problem is as well. Like once you bottled it, you know, you can't replace it. It's um, we've still got some little mill left, and we still got this cask. Um, 
I'm a bit confused though, Jenna. <laughs> okay, here we go. You, you said that this was uh, distilled in 1991, which was the year you were born. Was it? <laughs> is that is that, uh, is that true? It might very well be true. Um, but I thought I, we were going to get some from the 70s when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> you promised, Governor. I know. <laughs> a girl never likes to tell the full story, um, so you only get tips and drafts. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> But no, um, this one is really good. I think even the nose itself is yeah, so yeah. fruity, tropical, pineapple, um, and it's it's got so much going for it for being 29 years old. It's it's at a mature age, yeah. um, but there's there's no lacking in flavour in this one at all. It's always in the back. I get a little like I don't know what it is like. <laughs> No matter how old it gets, so. I just got a roll from Ruth, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I just got Cameron, you know, a lot of exclamation marks for topics of the age. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. quite right, Ruth. Quite right. <laughs> Call out. Um, but it's it's kind of it happened a lot with Little Mill, anyone as well. Not that I've tried many Little Mills outside of Cadenhead. It's one of the kind of things I appreciate most about the company, actually. Um, but it's always it's. Not quite a thin whisk, the flavour's all there in the front, but it's when it hits the back ear tongue, it hits the back, that it kind of just jumps out. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it, become, it becomes like, like what you expect it to be at the back rather than well, the nose what, as well. Yeah, yeah. Lowland whiskies, I think, they tend to be the lighter sort of starting place for, yeah. for a whisky drinker. But um, this one, I think, in particular, you know, it holds itself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not lacking in anything, as I say. And, it's nice syrupy and honey. Yeah. It's got a good influence yeah. from the, the wood. That's probably better than woody, uh, is what I mean. It's It's got them flavours and the fruits that, that come through as well. Um, but yeah, I think this one this one's pretty good. I have bought, actually, I've got a little mill at home. Um, this one has not been released. This one's in the warehouse, uh, and it's basically just a cask that we thought you know, it's good. There's not very much left in the cask. Um, it, it might may crop up in the future. We're not entirely sure of our plans. We leave things <laughs> last minute, as 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 the saying goes. But um, well, we're getting a lot of positive comments about this one as well. You know, and, and little milk can be a different, especially like when you when you do something like a little milk, because there are a lot of like diehard little. You know, yeah. You, you, with any distillery, I suppose, but when you've got something like close one. It's very different, you know. You you're never going to please everyone with every whiskey, anyway. It's but um, I think that's one of the hardest parts of the job. When we when we do a full release of eight casks, say, um, not every one of them casks you'll love, but, but we know that there will be someone out there that's it's it's, it's, it's um, providing for everyone, mm. and that's why we have a sort of team and a bigger team yeah. than, than usual that. Each of us can give our opinions because we all like something different. It, that's that's the, that's complete spot on. You know, um, when we're choosing the any of our releases, you know, it's myself, Jenna, Mitch, our director of sales, Ronald, and director of production, Finley. Sometimes crops in when he's looking for a for a drama in, a, in an afternoon, but we'll get together because it's you know some days you'll think. But the perfect example, I think, for that was we did a 27, 26, 27 year old dark egg. Yes. Um, at the beginning of the year. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we were tasting, that was actually one of the good days. We were tasting a lot of different art bags and the like older art bags. <laughs> they, they were all yeah. pretty good. There was quite a few casts. And, yeah. And <laughs> um, basically, we, me, Ryan, and Finley were convinced with one. And you and Mitch were like, something about it. We're like, no, 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 no. So we decided let's 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 reconvene the next day because you can get palate fatigue, and the spittoon was maybe not getting used as much that day. <laughs> um, so we, we we did come back the next day and we're like, oh, you're completely right. Um, you know, it, well, it wasn't bad, but the, the other one which which you suggested was ten times better. Mm. You know, it was. And we're like, yeah, thank God we, we did that. You know? And then we even went to it on the third day, and we were, we were still. Yeah, because we couldn't convince ourselves, yeah. but no, that, that was the day that we went, no, you're completely right. Yeah, and we didn't bottle it. I think we rewrapped it, did we? <laughs> the one that we actually were going, no, 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 that one. Not that we, one. No, no, we rewrapped <laughs> another one. And it wasn't that bad that we <laughs> rewrapped it. <laughs> <laughs> but we did rewrap another one, yeah. 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 But the one that we did choose initially, it was, it, it, we're just going to leave it a bit more. It uh -huh. just needed a bit more time. 
Um, but the one that we chose was, was Cracker. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> the one that you managed to stop us ball. I remember receiving the text. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> 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 we, we don't Thumbs up. <laughs> not that we don't like it. We're, 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 we're with you on this one. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, I think this one as well is. I would say maybe you could confirm. I would I would put this in an authentic collection pile as a possibility. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, this is something where we would taste. You know, this hasn't been released yet. It's in the warehouse, sitting in a cask. Yeah, it's a little bit low, um, but we would taste this one and think, right, this one's going to authentic collection. Um, An authentic collection, for those of you who don't know, is our range, which is single cask, also the cask strength. Completely natural, non gel filtered, no added colouring, so it, it's got all the characteristics just from the wood itself. Um, and this is exclusive to our cabin head shops. So we do have um, a franchise of shops, there's, there's nine across Europe. Um, I'm not going to ring them off just now, but there probably, <laughs> <laughs> there probably will be a, a post just coming up directly where you'll be able to find all our cabin head shops. But, as Cadenhead fans, I know you will already know where they all are. There we are. <laughs> there we are. Can we keep that up to hide me? For the <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Authentic Collection is exclusive to the Cadenhead shop, so you'll only be able to buy any Authentic Collection releases from Cadenhead shops. Um, so it's best keeping in with them, really. If there's a Cadenhead shop near you or within your country, get in touch. Um, they're all good people. Well, with, <laughs> with uh, Olivier Benchstock, who I know is a huge Little Mill fan, and he's been very complimentary of this one, so I think that's, that's just, that, yeah, that's it. So. Well, if I remember right, we did Little Mill in 2017 at the Open Day, and it, we done it blind, maybe, and he was the only one, that, or there was a few people that managed to that's exactly who, it was. Yep. Who, was, yep. who was Little Mill. Yeah. But that, that blind tasting. That was for the club, wasn't it? That was right, yep. yeah. And he just didn't pick it. <laughs> <laughs> three people picked it uh, yeah that's correct there's a handful of people yeah. Three, but yeah. Um, so yeah we've got good teams within all our Cadenhead shops um, they all know their stuff Lewis is one of them yeah. of course um, I bet. the teams around them are all the same <laughs> sales manager in Campbelltown so we like to keep in contact and, and they all speak with each other as well I try my best, very best, to give as much information as possible. <laughs> uh, but when there is a bottling that you can't get your hands on, blame me. <laughs> uh, within that shop, just for another <laughs> Just to re just to reiterate that, blame Jenna <laughs> for any complaints. And probably just to to maybe put a point out as well that you know that any of the ones that aren't like said to be released um, yet on this tasting tonight. Don't phone up the shops waiting for it to be released because we've already had people phoning the shop <laughs> asking when the Glendronic's coming out and we've had calls going, when's uh, this Glendronic coming out? We're getting phone calls about it. Oh, it, was the, it was the spring bank tasting at the start of the week. There's been mentioned of course, the, the release tomorrow of All Get Your Society, you know, like now about the 12 year old cash trend from Cocaine and 16. And we're, not, we're, 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 we're not advertising but, uh, those guys tonight. <laughs> but there, uh, there was mention of a local barley that was the, uh, the imminent release of the local barley. And I had the feeling that you guys were going to say the imminent release of any of these. And the guys take imminent, imminent to take you guys tomorrow, coming out tomorrow. Yeah. Whereas it might be a few months down the line. So we get the phone calls about all the all these releases of Gundronic included as well, like you said. Right. Um, but yeah, patience. Patience is key. For, for, right. for all the time I've been, here, <laughs> I've, I've been with the company about 11, 10, say 10 years. Uh, Springbank do not choose to release dates until the week before so, <laughs> yeah. so just patience is the key and um, we'll let you know you're, you're, for, for whatever reason somebody outside the company seems to figure out whether they can mind read or not that they know the release dates before we do but it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, we don't keep anything from you uh, club members society members are the first to know unless there's tastings like occasions like this we will Give them a little bit of information away. Tiny bit, tiny bit. And generally, that that when we do, it's a mistake, and afterwards we go on and all. What did we do? 
But yeah, I think, I think um, we can probably say that something will happen with this little yeah, in the future, yeah. but when we've got no plans yeah. organised yeah. just yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it really is. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's oh, the thing with, oh, with the games we're talking about with closed distilleries, you can get times where I've tasted other closed distilleries before and uh, you know, just because it's closed doesn't mean to say it's going to be great. Um, I think we've actually got we've got Little Mill we've re racked in the past too that, that we've not bottled yet. So, um, which shows our commitment to not it's got to be a good flavoured whiskey too. I think we re racked Little Mill about two or three years ago um, in the sherry because <laughs> we could bottle it and it'll sell. But if you bottle it, sell it, and then somebody tries it and it's, it's not so great. You can ruin your reputation for it. We've been we're nearly 180 years. We've built up the reputation. It takes a long time to do that. It doesn't take long to to ruin it. So we've got to try and keep the high standards as well. So I got all serious there. Come in and serious. We've got to get there sometime. <laughs> Shall we move on to the next round? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? Because certainly. This is, um, this is this is one of the most exciting ones for me, uh, definitely. I've, I've I've been with Caden Heads for about four years now, um, and I've never seen I've never seen a Glendronach bottled in my tenure working with Caden Heads. Well, I've only ever tried a Caden Heads Glendronach once, and that was about forty five minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> so this is going to be the second time. Uh, thankfully, oh, no, it was the same age and strength. Um, sister cask, sister cask, apparently. Yeah, um, but no, no, this is this is the one I kind of thought like, oh, this I'm really, really excited to try this because even even standard bottles of we find I find myself in a cabin head's kind of bubble sometimes here. So you miss out on these distilleries that you don't see quite as much, and you don't try many of their official bottles. So to be able to try this independently bottled by cabin heads by us, cask strength, unchilled filter, natural color, yeah, it was. It was definitely the one for me. So not quite bottled so, yet. Just to put sorry, it, no. <laughs> it will be eventually bottled. Eventually bottled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and um, this one was rewrapped as well, Louis. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there was well, the last the last Glendronach that was bottled by Cadden Heads was I think it was 2013. Uh, it was an international release. Um, a mix of two bourbon casks. Is that right? Is it two bourbon casks? Yeah. So in 2013, the mining of two bourbon casks for the international release, the small batch release. Um, and well, this one is seven years old. It was 23 years old when that was bottled. So this was now 30 years old. Um, so you can do the maths yourselves as well. 23 years old, um, two bourbon casks. And this one has been re-racked and put into sherry for another seven years. Uh, so it spent 23 years in bourbon and another seven years in sherry. So that's what you're trying now. And we have a percentage of 47.2%. I guess it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah it really is. Yeah, and, so battery yeah. and no. there's the, the sherry influence is coming through, but not overpowering yeah. it in the slightest. It's a mouthfeel that gets me. Like, it's just, it just coats the mouth. It's so oily and so it's... Yeah. I don't know if I like the taste of note chewy, but it does describe certain whiskies so well. And this definitely falls into that bracket. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. It's, yeah. it's so soft as well. Um, again, I don't like saying it an easy drinking whiskey. They're all, they're all easy to drink for yeah. me, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can sit back and just enjoy that one. It's, there's not too much to think about. Um, if you think too much, you'll just get yourself in a, a bit of a piss. Yeah, yeah. But um, there, there's lots going on there, and you can just enjoy this one. I think yeah, is, is what you're looking for. We've got a question from Benjamin Poon. So we know Benji pretty well. Um, why did the team decide to rewrap the Glendronic into a first fill sherry? Um, this is actually before my time um, in the Cadnades team. Uh, Jenna was in the company, but not in the Cadnades team at the time, and obviously yourself just explained. It was just a so just a, just a bear. Now I've done like for the, the the bottling that Lewis was actually talking about the twenty three year old. Um, I wasn't long joining afterwards, and I did a tasting with that one too, and it was it, it, the quality was brilliant from the the two bourbon casks. So I've only got to assume 
that there was something just not quite right with the with the other okay. sister cask. So the decision was, was to me to put it into sherry. And it was a first fill sherry cask, um, which is at seven years. Now, it, it, it's got great integration with it. Mm -hmm. um, and Glendronic as well, as the, the, their own bottlings are more known. Yeah, the sherry, sherry. sherry dominated, yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember that single cask range, it was just, yeah, batch after batch after batch. It was, it was Glendronic, but yeah. But the, the bourbon as well, like the, the bourbon Glendronic that we were talking about, um, it's unusual to see, you know, you don't see too much in the market. I mean, I actually did a tasting um, in our shop in Odensee a few years ago, and they, they had a bottle, and we, we did it in the tasting. And I said, this is a Glendronic, um, two bourbon hogsheads. And a gentleman stood up and said, this isn't Glendronic. I was like, sorry? And you're lying. They don't do sherry cat. Eh, they don't do bourbon casks. I was like, well, yeah, they, they did at this point, you know, that... There are many distilleries who might have a style, you know, um, of whiskey, which you probably know with the bottlings, like you know, quite far less known for a sherry, you know, um, Gondronic, obviously, as well. But they still will fill or have filled in the past bourbon casks as well. We've got lots of bourbon quite far less, you know, that you've never seen before. They, you, you rarely see, sorry. Um, we did have the, the, the bourbon Gondronics as well. So it's always interesting, like, from an independent boss perspective, and for somebody who likes a whiskey, you can actually try distilleries whiskey that you wouldn't normally get to try. You know, you, you wouldn't normally get to try bourbon. Yeah. But yeah. this one, I think, if it was twenty, if it's thirty years in the sherry alone, it might be too much. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. That, so, I think the thing, the, the the second maturation of it, the the seven years yeah. in the sherry is really helpful. Even even with the seven years, so like what we what we touched on earlier on with the the samples. That we had before that we said that four months in sherry maybe but this is at seven years in sherry and the 23 years in bourbon it's not nearly taking too much it's almost like a perfect balance of that 23 years in bourbon seven years in sherry it's all just came together very nicely yeah and i think it's an important point to point out here as well this is this is why independent bottlers are independent bottlers mm -hmm. as well um distilleries op are opening up all the time these days but um you know, whiskey doesn't become whiskey until it's three years old. Um, and when, when you open up, they need to have three years where there's no money coming in if they're not selling casks. And this is where independent bottlers can step in and they buy casks. So, so they produce stuff like some new make spirit that independent bottlers and private cask owners can buy. Um, and that gives them a cash flow to be able to carry on as well whilst they're waiting for their whiskey to become of age um, and, and that's one of of the things where independent bottlers can become ind independent bottlers we're buying casks not always at a young age but um you know we we i know carmen will maybe confirm but we buy casks of all ages but um if we if we buy them young it gives us the opportunity you know they come in parcels as far as i know um, and we might buy some at five years old whereas there might be 10 casks we might bottle two casks at 10 years old, but we might keep three casks to bottle at 15 years old. Um, and it's that planning process. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's, it's well. like we if you're buying the parcels Jenna was mentioned there, um you know, you might buy just for instance 10 casks of 14 year old whiskey, you know, and not maybe 10 casks of a 10 year old, maybe five casks of a five year old, there may be offerings of these parcels. You don't always have to get the, the complete lot of them, but Generally, you know, you'll get offered these parcels at the time. Um, some, like especially some, like maybe like some of the newer, smaller independent bottlers might have to purchase to to sell straight away, which is fair enough. You know, that's the way you do it, and everything they bottle will, will generally be good because the the competition is so high with independent bottling. But we are that fortunate position, and sometimes you'll see a release where maybe. We've maybe bought, for instance, a parcel of Quintalkers, you know, maybe eight, nine years old. And you'll see a lot of bottlings coming out of eight, nine year old Quintalkers. Um, no, don't get me wrong. If if we've got one of, you know, if if, if some of the Quintalkers we've got eight, eight nine, ten years old yeah. is, is good, we would bottle it. But if we don't feel it's right to that standard, we will lay on it for a bit more. You know, we'll, we'll look after it too. 
on that note as well, the the recent release, the autumn twenty twenty, um, Cabinet's authentic release, right there, the Glenn Tucker's ten year old, it's not eight or nine, just above, just at that kind of benchmark ten. Try that at the tasting with you guys, and um, going through it and doing tasting notes, and then when it was released, um, last Friday, tried it again from the samples, and it was what it's. I told everyone straight away in the shop, this is one of the best whiskies I've tried all year. Manzanier Sherry, 10 years old, so had been in the Manzanier Sherry for two years, and it was just perfect, ready right at that point. I've just remembered, I've still got a pile of money for one. Yeah. I've still got a pile of money up. That's all right. You'll get, <laughs> That's you'll, you'll, up. you'll get the bottle when we get the money. <laughs> Uh, as it is, as it should I, be. I, I think that one follows up as well in the, the different maturations. There's no time scale. We will not keep in for one year plus. Yeah. You know, it's it just depends when it's ready. When we taste it, we think, you know, that's that's good. Yeah, if it's, it's right, it's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with, with this as well, this was re racked at the time, and we kind of touched upon the re rack. And I think since August alone, um, oh, I can't remember the exact number, but I'm pretty sure we've done. Roughly between 100 to 200 re racks of casks, you know, um, which is a huge amount. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of force, that's the ability that we've got here, you know, um, different, st- you know, different sherries, the, you know, obviously Manzanilla, PH, Paul Cortado, Oloroso, et cetera, Fino, um, we've got uh, rum, different rums, uh, ports, mm-hmm. said, even bourbon as well, mm-hmm. some of them. You know, so we are cast management is is, is huge here. You know, um, we, we can't hide behind anything. The, the difference with an independent bottle or a, a normal distillery of the obvious thing is, when we sell something, we have to replace it or find something to replace it with that's equally or better quality. So we have to keep trying to evolve our stock, trying to make it as diverse, trying to make it as good quality as possible. And, that's 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 it's a big challenge. It, it really is. Um, it's looking for the something different and yeah. interesting that's that's not out there already. And I think um, we're slightly, maybe one step ahead of the game in there. I think sometimes <laughs> maybe ten steps behind <laughs> another time. But sometimes <laughs> I think uh, Lewis mentioned earlier as well that, that this is more than likely. Again, we've not got complete plans, but it is going to be. Um, more than likely be released in the future and I think it's worth pointing out here that our future releases or any release and um, to be able this is something that would I believe that would be sell out straight away and Lewis would maybe confirm that being in the shop yeah uh, 100% and, and I'm, I'm on social media Facebooks and I, I, I can see that people are disappointed when they phone up on launch day and they see it sold out and they wonder why is it sold out um, and that is mainly because Cadenhead, our Cadenhead Club, get first notice of our releases, um, which gives them the opportunity to phone our Cadenhead shops if it's an authentic release or their ne- nearest Cadenhead stockist around the world if it's an original collection release um, to reserve bottles. And you can put your name on the list within the shops. Um, it won't guarantee you'll get the bottle, but most most of our patent head shops do a ballot system um, because yeah. we, we don't have enough for everyone, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the demand for these for these kind of bottles, like the likes of this Glendron here, you get a single cast bottle and this one's at 30 years old. If it's in the Sherry Butter, if it's in a hogshead, it might be it's a hogshead. 200, 200 mm-hmm. bottles. Um, and there's now on a couple of thousand cabin head club members mm-hmm. and it's as much as you'd like to please every day and you'd like to for everyone to be able to taste it um sometimes it's it's just impossible um and, and as you hit on with it being windonic as well it's going to be more rare you know yeah. it's it's very a lot of distilleries nowadays um it's, it's very difficult to get a hold of of their whiskey mm-hmm. you know there are many reasons for that too you know like they need their stock you know um some of the bigger name distilleries, the, the pricing of some of the older stock is, is just crazy. Yeah. You know, with Gronick, you don't see very much of. Um, they, yeah. they, they're very big, you know, very big company, very well known, very popular. So they'll use any stock they've got. It would be nice to get some. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be. Um, well, what it was, um, was it Glen, Glen Gronick was or one of the, 
the, the Billy Walker three. Yeah. Right? Gondrana, Ben Rear, and Glenn Gusser. Uh, and now, of course, that's moved on to Glen you now. And my cabinet has bottlings of Glen have been a few of my favourite ever bottlings that we've ever done. Um, I just look forward to all of that stuff coming out again. Well, funnily enough, we, we actually just recently, again, with, with <laughs> nice, nice segue there, um, we we recently built a new uh, new distillery, a new, <laughs> that's a story for you, a new warehouse at the distillery. And so we've been trying basically to help me and Jenna's job a lot more <laughs> is to try and get more of the whiskey that we've purchased around uh, Scotland to Campbelltown so that we can actually vet it and, and keep an eye on it. Um, because there just wasn't enough room before, and we've got loads of casts. And from one from one place alone, we just took in, I think, roughly about four hundred casks, yeah. just from one like uh, one storage unit, um, the warehousing uh, facility. So I thought you meant one distillery. Um, <laughs> no, 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 but within that, there was there was a few casks of going out as well. Yeah. There'll be thousands of casks. Ideally, is I think I mentioned it earlier. We would like them all here in Campbelltown, but mm. unfortunately we we didn't have the storage capacity where we've got it fully now, I don't know. But we're trying to get as we're trying our best to get them transported here to Campbelltown and it's basically just to look after them. Uh, for all we know they could be sitting in different warehouses completely empty. Um, if we wanted to taste them, it would cost us money for a sample postage packaging, um, which is just not ideal, especially when we've got a really good team. I mean, if we put a sample request in, the production team have that. They've been to the warehouse, drawn it, bottled it, labelled it, and brought it down to the office within an hour. Oh, unbelievable. You, and you could have like 30 sample requests. Yeah. You hear this clink, 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 them carrying the boxes up, up, up the stairs <laughs> that, to the office. It's, it's that, unbelievable. The absolute machines. There's still, it's, yeah. It still has the uh, condensation from coming out of <laughs> the, the gas in the warehouse. Um, so we've got the team here to do it. So if we get the cast here, we are able to look after these casts a lot better. Whether they need re racking whether we need to regauge them as soon as they come in, um, and that's just checking the strength and what's left with the <laughs> amount of, of alcohol or liters liquid that's in the cask. Um, because as all of you will know, if it drops below forty percent, it's it's no longer whiskey. So a few roundabout ways is blending it and bringing the strength back up with other casks, batting it, bringing the strength back up with other casks, or not that we do it very often uh, or plan to do it, but um, it would have to be bottled with something other than whiskey, maybe like a spirit, a spirit drink. drink yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's... Have we done it stopped. recently in the last few years? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it was mentioned last night. So. I, I, did, I did see it in the comments, like the tasting last night. Um, bottling an understrength whiskey. Yeah. Uh, that was us. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure Cadenhead's done that. Uh, just to tip one off. <laughs> In fairness, it, it was uh, I think there was a mistake at the time where originally we thought it was over um it was it was over forty percent and then we found out a week before it was, it was it was getting rolled out at a festival. So we had to bottle it as uh, Scot uh, Scottish spirit drink. Spirit, spirit drink, drink, I'm sure it was a uh, and it was named as the Helaman, but mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, I tasted it when we were picking it, and it was absolutely cracking. Yeah, yeah. there was what a steel really as well, was. anyways. Yeah. What was it like? I actually, I got a hold. Eighty quid, yeah. It's gone though. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, um, yeah. But no, there, there's a lot of involvement in the build process, and it's it's from the minute of buying the casks, looking after them, making sure there's liquid in them, there's no cracked staves, yeah. it's not leaking the strengths good enough that it's not going to drop under strength and um, it's, it's not happening very often okay it maybe happened with that particular whiskey but I'm unaware of many others that it's happened with no, it, not to my knowledge um, in recent years anyway that there might be in the past but since I've been here I'm pretty sure that that's the only one that's happened to um, or the one, only one that we've we've, we've, we've noticed so far <laughs> Um, we've had a couple of few, a couple of few. We've had a few comments. Sorry, um, Raymaster doesn't want to finish this dram. Needs to savor it. Um, a lot of people commenting and how the sherry works well without being overpowering. And Andrew Rogan has described this as one of the drams of the week, which is pretty high praise yeah. to the, some of the drams that have been on show. 
Um, I hope the Springbank team are hearing that. <laughs> <clears throat> That's going to bite me. <laughs> Colin Sim uh, has said the cost of this tasting was worth it for the Glendronic alone. Love it. Thanks very much, Colin. That's very kind. And um, we'll charge you more for the other ones in the future then. <laughs> no, that's terrible. Sorry. Um, will we move on to the next round on that note? Yeah, I think so. Um, on that note. On that note. On that note. Yeah. We made it this far. <laughs> Nearly there. <laughs> so, number five on the list, uh, we're, we're taking a very different route here. And it's one that I'm going to present as well because I've made a slight error in the age. On your tasting mat and in your uh, booklet, it says six years old, Paul John. Um, it's actually seven years old. Um, so it's older. It's actually it's nearly eight, but it's, it is actually seven years old. I just made a complete mess of the of, of counting. Not for the first time in my life. It's beautiful nose straight away. Yeah. You, well, ran, you ran out of fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody stole my abacus. <laughs> so um, Paul John, a uh, Indian distiller based in Goa, we actually purchased this cask in 2017. So it's had three years maturation in Campbelltown, which obviously Campbelltown and Goa, we do have similar climates, um, but in Goa, it's going to be very hot. So they're going to get a, maybe a lot of loss um, in the cask. Too. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's going to get that entail will then probably give more wood influence. Yeah. So. By bringing it to Campbelltown and maturing it here, you are going to get a kind of a cooler climate. I remember when they first came over, the five-year-olds. As soon as the five-year-old came out, it was well. This is this is a system. Yeah, yeah. A, yeah. So we released the five-years-old first. Yeah. As soon as it came over, we bought one. Yeah. You couldn't believe the colour of it. When, yeah, and it was, it was really dark. Yeah. And a lot of people were uh, amazed that it was even five years old. They maybe thought it was twelve to thirteen yeah. years old. We we bought one. We've actually rewrapped re re one into sherry, which we've still got. So that's been in sherry for about three years now. Probably should get a sample of that pretty soon. <laughs> um, see how it's getting on. And then we've got this one as well. Uh, it's completely different to what we've got. And it, it's to showcase the sort of Cadenhead World Whiskey range that we do. I'm looking at my laptop here. I'm over. Uh, to look at the World <laughs> Whiskey range. Um, because we don't just buy whiskey from Scotland alone. We, we'll buy it from, from anywhere. Um, we've had a Swedish whiskey, Irish whiskey, American bourbon, Canadian whiskey, Australian, you know, um, Japanese as well. Um, so we'll, we'll bottle anything as long as it's good. And we're very pleased with the stuff that we got from, from Paul John too. And it is a, it's a distillery and um, a brand that's come on leaps and bounds over the years. You know, um, I actually bought their, their own bottle and Christmas bottle um, last year's one. Mm. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely great stuff. Um, I think there's a lot of people, you see a lot of shows where maybe people are a bit sceptical. You know, you know, I'm not too sure about it. You know, like, Then they try it and they go, that's that's brilliant. And this one is it's a change from what we're trying here. This is, it, it is one, um, but I like it the way it is. It's got that earthiness, yeah. a lot of nuttiness to it as well. Um, I do think this one, as good as it is, but a little drop of water can actually, just a couple of drops really helps can open it up as well. You know, the nose, like, the nose, through, it's reminiscent of like, older Isla whiskey. It's like, even like an older Ardbeg, the one released in January, it's got that, like, when it's away from. It's quite salty. Yep, yeah, yeah, well, it's so very salty. I wonder if that's due to the maturation in Campbelltown. I've never been convinced of the maturation yeah. where, where, where yeah. it's matured. But um, you you do this. This is the type of, of whiskey that you do wonder: has it made an influence or has it not? Being yeah. next to the seaside and the warehouses in in Campbelltown, it's uh, definitely got that touch. I think you, you said it last week when we, when we visited it, and you said that it's definitely mellow because it was a lot spicier before. Oh yeah, yeah. There yeah. was there was that whole spiciness. Yeah. Um, you, you definitely brought. Yeah, I like that really old ones yeah. as well. I thought that was probably quite really, a yeah, wooden yeah. bit. So it. It has shown it's kind of it's, it's kind of mellow. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's it has, Yeah, definitely. And like when when we're purchasing casks, um, like from these ones that we purchased, we went we basically had a contact with Paul John at the time. We were saying Shelton, who was the intermediate for us, who then 
we, we bought direct from the distillery. And sometimes we can do that, um, especially with maybe the kind of foreign distilleries, you know, we get to maybe try samples and this is the ones that we tried and we purchased. But the vast majority of the, the casks we buy, um, you're buying blind. So this was pretty much selected at the time for something that we, we thought was going to be a hit in the future or, or even, you know, it was a, it was a hit originally, but we thought we would try and develop it. It was, it was, it was a, quite an interesting thing because obviously they can't really, in Goa, you're not going to be able to, well, you can't, but as long as you've got the, the air-conditioned warehouses, but to have a slow maturation as you would here without costing a fortune in air-conditioning, um, it's a, it, it's something about unique, especially in the west coast of Scotland as well. And like you, I'm slightly sceptical. You need to have. Yeah. yeah. It's I'm, very, not, I'm not entirely yeah. convinced yet. I'm, I'm, there's still a lot of learning. <laughs> in whiskey, there's there's a lot of learning. Mm. You learn every day. I don't think you'll ever know yeah. The, yeah. the full profile of whiskey. There's a lot of taste and there's a lot of distilleries. There's new ones opening up all, all the time. But uh, maybe it's just me. I'm never. Like, no, no. no I mean, I've, I've, yeah. you, you meet it certainly people. looks good in the back. I'll leave. <laughs> you meet people every day who've probably forgotten more than I know. You know, yeah. so, so, you know, you, you think that you know a lot, and then you go, well, actually, do you know what? <laughs> you come across something, and it brings you back to square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wonder. Yeah, you do wonder. It's the same. It's like, what's your favourite distillery? And you think, yeah. well, it's probably like. <laughs> <laughs> What's your second thing? <laughs> you taste so so much, and you think, well, I wasn't I wasn't sure about that one before, but you taste a different style, or you taste another independent bullet that's done something different, and it changes continuously. I don't think you could ever yeah. say that's my favourite unless. Um, well, it's got when you say that saltiness, it's got that kind of I'm probably going to shoot myself in the foot. Yeah, that, kind of, <laughs> that kind of Campbelltown kind of funk, kind of yeah, you know, uh, that, that saltiness. I was actually told to say that with Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> it popped up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, there is that. It has got that kind of saltiness. That, that and it's still, of... it's still got that heavy note that it's, it's holding in strength. You know, 54.1%. I wouldn't say it's mm -hmm. high in strength at all. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. very drinkable, but... Very meaty. It's, it's, it's kind mellowed. of bacon, yeah. you know, that kind of cured meat, the kind yeah, of smokiness yeah. from it. You know? It's totally mellowed out since at the five and six. Although they were fantastic drums. At the same time, like, um, but I just it's just kind of relaxed and tamed a little bit more. And it shows you what an independent butler can do. Yeah. Um, and it's just playing around with these casks. Mm -hmm. um, how many? How many of these casks did we buy? Originally, I think it was. Five originally. I thought it was five the second. Was it five twice with that? I think I thought it was ten in total. But well, possibly then. I think it's five and five then. Um, so it's five originally, and then the next batch was we bought we we chosen like five individual ones. We bought three PE, two unpeated, yeah. and when they get <laughs> when they get tra <laughs> when, <laughs> when they get transported here, um, they, they don't get transported in the casks. They, they get transported in containers, and we were going to put them in the casks. But when they got here, um, they all got blended together. Then and someone the forgot to tell someone. Oh, so that's where the small bat <laughs> six-year-old came from. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bit of a panic. And I, do you know what? It actually turned out. It was fantastic. It, it, was, it was actually yeah, brilliant, really which brilliant. shows that, that actually blending them together made... That 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 blend yeah. was actually better than any of the single casks that we, we thought we'd chosen. But sure in the, sure in the warehouse tastings in Camberton, there's always... Well, there's been a Paul John on it for the last maybe year and a half. And it's always one that the guys that have said, whether it's Donald or Craig or Mick that are doing the warehouse tasting, they'll always, they'll always do it blind. They won't say to anyone what it's going to be when they taste it, and then it's only afterwards they say. And this one was, it was like half peated and half unpeated, so it, it causes a bit of kind of, it, it, it creates conversation and causes a bit of confusion in the, um, in the, the group that are doing the taste. And then when they find out it's from Paul John Distillery in Goa in India, it's I, I tend to do that on blind as well, and mainly I I ask people to guess the age because uh, it's just interesting to hear yeah. what people come back mm -hmm. with, um, and it generally is people guess older uh, rather than younger. And the peat's not it's not it's not like Campbellton peat or well the peat that we use, or it's not like Isla peat. It's 
It's a very what I said at the start. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like it's a mineral peat with age behind it as well. It's kind of got that. It's just fell away a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> what here? Yeah, people are sort of picking up and the, the, the peat unit as well on it. Um, but as I said, it's not overpowering, even for yeah. a young age. And sometimes, obviously, with peat whiskies, they can actually, if you're looking for a peat hit, the younger they are, the generally probably the more peat you're going to get. The, the, yeah, exactly. So the older one you're going to get, the less of a, of a kind of smack in the face. So it, it's it's really balanced out well. Do we, know, do we know where the Paul Dunn's peat comes from? Is it important? I believe they do import it. I've heard that important before. Same in the barley as well, I think. Yeah. I've definitely heard about the peat being important. I think they before, take but... a lot from Scotch whiskey and try to, to replicate that as much as possible in, in India, but I could be wrong. So it's, as far as I understand, they do. Well, they're doing this working. Yeah, so, definitely. You know, I, mean, I mean, as you say, it shows and everything. Um, yeah. They're all over the place. Um, I meet Shelton in various places. I know you do as well. And their, their stand is always very busy. And yeah. People speak highly of Paul Drummond. As I said, they've came leaps and bounds over the last year. Children did a huge job with that too, but it's it's good stuff. It's not just a case of, you know, they've really done well, to especially how good the industry is, you know, how much competition there is. So the standout is just really kind of showing it. Yeah. Now I think we're kind of maybe over time a bit here, so we'll maybe go on, <laughs> the, on to the last one. I want to know, right? Yeah, but we'll we, we, might still, we might still be here for another. For three people that like to speak a lot. <laughs> there, there was one um, kind of conflict <laughs> when, when people are asking, what, what do we do with our bad casks? Well, most of the time when you've got, we'll have casks that maybe not so great, but they don't, they're not necessarily bad. So we're talking about what we do with the re-racking process. There are one or two, which, yeah. But you know, you're talking about a handful of thousands, of thousands that we've got here that are, that are maybe not so great. I think the most famous one we had um, was, it's, it's, I think it must be empty by now, but it was the 1959 Glen Grant. And um, it, it was terrible. <laughs> it wasn't It wasn't the spirit's fault, it was it was the cask itself. And there was nothing we could do with it. You, you couldn't, couldn't vat it with it, you couldn't sell it as a single cask, you couldn't blend it with anything could just ruin the blend it was like drinking liquid metal mixed with melted rubber i never ever tasted that cask but there was a five cl in the office for a long time and it was it was it was black and there was a white foam round about it so i was like no <laughs> no chance <laughs> <I'm tasting> that. <laughs> well, that's exactly why and it was, it was um <laughs> our, our, our colleague at springbank um, the springbank uk a uh, sales manager graham mcpherson um, he used to be the, the manager of Cadden Heads uh, back in 1842. So, sorry, Grant. Um, <laughs> well, again, another running joke for the <laughs> the <Grant> <laughs> So, um, Grant, Grant actually, when I, when I kind of started, I just want to start on your desk. 1959 Glen Grant, would you like a try? So, yeah, yeah of course. It was, it was the most horrible thing I've ever yeah. tasted. Um, I had more sense so it's still there. <laughs> in fairness, though, when you uh, yeah, in fairness, it was it was black. It didn't look good, but I thought, oh, do you know what? It must be good. <laughs> anyway, so we'll, we'll we'll carry on with this one. Yeah, so we are moving on to the last jam of the evening, and another nineteen ninety one mm. uh, distillery or whiskey. I don't know why they keep giving me the nineteen ninety ones, um, but it's oh, you twelve then. Well, this, this whiskey is 29 years old at 48.9%, uh, and it's from Kalila, in, from the Isle of Isla. It's from a refile of bourbon, halted, uh, and interestingly, I don't think I need to say much about the Kalila distillery. It's a very, very well-known distillery, one of the more subtle distilleries on Isla, um, and it's, it's peaty, it's floral. Peppery mm -hmm. notes, so it, it's got a bit of everything to it. Um, I think the only thing that I'll point out with with Kalila is, and independent bottlers is that um, independent bottlers can showcase distilleries in a different light. So we have touched on it throughout the evening, but likes of Kalila um, is owned by Diageo, one of the big guys in in in, in the in the spirits industry. So they will use the bulk 
of Kalila in blended whiskey, like the good Johnny Walkers. Uh, and independent bottlers can then step in and like to the authentic cl collection, we can bottle a single cask and we show off the real style of what Kalila can do. Um, obviously, this this adds to a blend and that they produce this whiskey the way they wish to have it to mix and blend with these other whiskies um, to produce this really good Johnny Walker. Um, but we can showcase that ourselves as a single cask as part of the authentic collection or we can bat them together or we can mature them in different casks and do something different with it. So I think I think that's the only thing I need to say about Kalila. Um, one other thing I'll, I'll point out quickly because I only noticed it earlier on <laughs> is uh, it was founded in 1846 um, by Hector Henderson and I think the only reason that I, I, <laughs> I, I realised this today was because I done the little mill earlier and he was a, uh, Hector Henderson was a shareholder in the Campbelltown distillery but he also owned Little Mill in 1840 and um, so it's always a learning process. Um, we, we know there's 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 hundreds of, of Scotch whisky distillers. We're, we're doing wild whiskies as well, so there's so much to learn, and we'll never know the facts and figures of every distillery. Um, but when we do tastings like this, you pick up little things to add to your knowledge every time you do a tasting. Uh, so yeah, Hector Henderson uh, founded Kalila, um, but he also had shareholder. He was a shareholder in the Campbellville Distillery in 1837 and owned Little Mill in 1840. Okay, so that's my wee added bit of knowledge for tonight. I learned something today, that's pretty good. That's Hopefully new, it's new, true. New, <laughs> it's one of the best things about doing tastings like this, even if like, you're doing tastings with somebody else, it's like, there's, there's like kind of nuggets of knowledge that you get from maybe somebody in the crowd yeah. or one of yourselves as well. It's like picking up those little things like the independent bottle as a whole, you get to try all the different things and learn all these little bits and pieces and nuggets of knowledge that Jenna's just thrown at us. <laughs> definitely <laughs> store them. I definitely, as you say, every day's a school day. Well, yeah. That, that's, you, that's standard. Yeah, I mean, it's subtle, subtle smoke. It's, it's mellow. It's are, you getting much, are you getting much smoke from it? I think, yeah. Yeah. I kind of half thought I might have had the wrong brand there. Like, everything was labelled. It is the right brand because I smell Carmen's as well at a distance. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, there, 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 there's a social distance. Yeah, there's a social distance. Yeah. Taste, um, coffee's coming in in the, the, the finish. This is actually, funnily enough, the youngest Kalula I've ever tried. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of the core range. Check you. Product. <laughs> it's your fault, the cabin heads. Yeah, we've done younger ones. Younger, younger, yeah. Not in my time, though. It's all been. I think the youngest was 32 in my tenure with cabin heads. Well, I've actually wrote here matured with age. Whether well, it would be otherwise matured, but it's just just ruin it though. Oh, if I'm older. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No. It was it was a uh, big enough cabinet as a whole. No, showing yeah. off over there. I can't I remember. <laughs> <laughs> just we're on, but we are obviously with everything going on. We are trying to keep socially distanced, and we are quite far apart. Um, ironically, this is the closest we've probably ever been together. <laughs> yes, uh, we've been socially practicing social distancing. I don't know how years. you need to point that out whilst we're live on one basis. <laughs> I, I meant to actually put that at the start that we're, we're all keeping, that's why we're yeah. keeping apart, <laughs> just to make sure. Um, we're, getting a good, we're getting a good mix of favourites as well. You know, uh, Little Mill Glendrona, Richard Brass, get the Paul John. Um, Glendrona seems to be doing pretty well. I think the I think as it's going at the moment, the Paul John is potentially tipping it for me. I'm well. I'm quite I'm quite highly. I'll go with the Glendronach tonight. Closely followed by the Little Mill, maybe followed by the Kalila. Mm. I don't know. They're all pretty good. Yeah. I mean the the, the unnamed space side I'm, is I'm really actually, high as well. So it's the, I've got to say, I think that the name space site for me is probably. It's you said you said tough before. Choice, I think. I think it's you nice said before it was. You couldn't believe that the bottle was still for sale. Yeah. So this is like, but you get a twenty-six year old spring bank. That's goes without saying what um, it is. We actually got one from Shelton, um, who says the peat from Paul John comes from the Highlands and Isla. Oh, there we are. Thanks, Shelton. See that was it. That's what I said, wasn't it? It's not <laughs> quite from Isla, but it's not quite. Ah, uh, see you. 
Let's see if we've, we've got any more questions. <laughs> if we've got. I mean, maybe I'm slightly biased, but I do feel that this lineup is hard to position each Westie because yeah. they do yeah. have their favourite points and yeah. points within each one. I mean, the Glenn Roth is, you always, I always feel sorry for Dram number one. Yeah, it's it's a hard position to take. It's a hard position to take, but I feel the Glenn Roth is stands. Uh, when you, you, you go back to it as well, I don't know if any of you guys back home have still got it in your glass, but when you go back to it, yeah, it's yeah. just it's just bigger and, and better. I've went, it, I actually went back to the, the, the space head again, and I think it, I'm reiterating it's my favourite. Yeah. yeah, it's cracking. Yeah, I do remember you saying you were pretty enamoured with it. I do, I do like it. Have we got any more questions for tonight? Is there anybody else? Don't we'll say that. <laughs> There's another taste in note I Ian Sindon with a height joke, very original. <laughs> <laughs> That's one that I veer away from. You get it in this Kalua. It's like no it's like a balloon kind of smell, a rubber balloon kind of smell mm. that you sometimes get. I, I like I like it as a smell and a taste in note for myself, but I don't like describing whiskies as that. I think I that, get that's another thing that's quite yeah. hard when we're um, doing tasting notes because an authentic collection of the tasting notes on the back label uh, and it's just really a guide it's a it's not this tastes like that it's it's our perspective yeah. on, on that whiskey but it's just a guide to give you a rough idea of what it tastes like yeah. Uh, Dave Ogden's asking who's manning the phones tomorrow. I think that question is. <laughs> <laughs> who's manning the phone? There's a, that's really, there's something that has been happening since we came back um, from after lockdown, uh, especially on release days, whether it's Springbank or Cadenhead release days. Um, obviously, given the situation, a lot of the office staff are working from home at the moment. Um, so if you do call the Cadenhead shop in Campbelltown. Um, you might hear it ring out the phone will keep ringing and ringing and ringing but it's not ringing because we're ignoring your phone call yeah right um, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um it gets redirected to somewhere in the company so it might be one of the office buildings mm-hmm. um where everyone's working from home still so it's ringing out on your phone but it's just because we're on the phone at the time so we get then lots of emails saying i've tried the phone four or five times today and you can't get through i mean i'm going to Probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to it anyway. But um, <laughs> the, shop, the shop opens at 10, 10 o'clock and you can start selling that call from 10 o'clock. Yeah. On release day, especially on a Friday, you know, we're up in the office having tea break with our breakfast rolls. You're, you're, you're not helping out, of <laughs> They've been for a whole hour. And, yeah, as Louis says, <laughs> the one of mine and it redirects from the office and we're, we're looking for the phone trying to pick it up. It, it's chaos. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Rogan's asking uh, about details in the next club ball. Uh, well, Andrew, we we actually are going to be having one very, very shortly. Um, we plan to do one, obviously, earlier on this year, but obviously with everything that went on, trying to get back, um, starting up operations, getting all the other bottlings. And obviously, we're, we're sharing the bottling hall, and the, the guys have been working tirelessly, uh, tirelessly up at the distillery, in the bottling hall, in the offices, in the shops. Apart from me, probably. <laughs> well, the bottling hall's working in shifts to reduce the mm. amount of people within the, the bottling hall as well. So they're, they're working in a morning shift and an afternoon mm. shift. Um, so there's less people within that, each one as well. So yeah. So we will have details in the next couple of weeks. Remind me of that tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I can't tell you obviously too much about it because it's, it's got to go to the club first. Yeah. And that's all well, I've got to say. Hopefully, everyone has received an email from the Cadet Club to sign up to our portal. Um, and this is where you will purchase Cadet bo- Club bottlings in the future. And it's just one, one place where you'll be able to access your benefits, whether it be news, um, your, your emails, your purchase your Cadet Club bottles or historic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, as well. Book tastings, yeah, and book tastings and tours like that as well. So, and um, we would encourage everyone to to sign up to that portal as soon as you can, um, or you'll lose out. And if you're not already a Cadden Head Club member, <laughs> sign up to the Cadden Head Club as well, of course. Well, it's got many benefits, but um, if you need to look for info like that, I'm sure it's on our website. Yeah, everything's on there. I think there's been some very nice comments um, from I like to also 
say a big thanks to it's been a obviously we would love to have everyone in Campbelltown during the AME for the festival normally. So this was just to try as a kind of substitute. It's obviously not as good as having everyone. You know, the, the town's always buzzing during that week. But we, we we do appreciate all the support that you guys have given. And there's been a huge effort that's went into this. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about from, from the bottling hall who are, and everyone working at the distillery who are already hugely busy with the extra work that we had to do to get back. With this on top of it, it was enormous. Um, everyone who worked in the, the dispatch and the, and the mail orders, you know, the, 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 the two sales teams from Caddenheads and Springbank went up to help, apart from Dave, who was really picking himself up last night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Call out. Uh, I don't know. Um, Nathan, Nathan, an unsung hero this week. Yeah, I think Nathan should yeah. should get that wee bit of extra appreciation because he's the brains behind the technology here. Uh, it's not a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, all, all, all the team, all the admin team, everyone, I think we've got to give a, a big shout out to to Mary Parson as well. Um, yeah, our tours and events organist, mm -hmm. she's the one who sorts out everything, gets the festival organised each year. And having to deal with people like me on a daily basis, giving her <laughs> an extra headache. Well, I don't know if anyone's seen our uh, time-lapse video of his packaging. <laughs> Cameron stood all the time on his phone. No, I've actually... I've <laughs> was, that, that, emails. That was a clip one. <laughs> that one, I, I'm not happy with Nicole for that one. She never told me she was doing that. But, uh, no. but I was genuinely, I, I looked at the video, I don't know if you've seen it on social media, but it's like, <laughs> it's basically the sales team when we're working in dispatch, and it was almost like a Benny Hill sketch, like everybody's zooming up all the busy bees. But there's one person in the top left-hand corner not moving and on the phone, and I was looking, going, who's that late? Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was genuinely about work email. Well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's that sort of, spirit we have with throughout the uh, company that everyone pulls up when they need to they pull, they pull their weight and we do what we need to do to yeah i think the other guys touched on it at the at the tasting on the previous nights that well yeah, it is literally done by everyone here mm -hmm. it's people moving about departments and with us and other companies not just yeah. whiskey companies in general but the like the rumour was on about you, you would outsource a company. Yeah, yeah. You, it's, like somebody else does all the all the heavy work, really, whereas you just organise the event. But no, this has been a challenge for kind of actually finding. I mean, there's so many people looking for yeah. as well, yeah. um, but everyone does their bit to help out, and I think uh, as a team together throughout the company is. Yeah, definitely. And the everyone watching tonight, buying the packs, joining in with the tastings, having to put up with us, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, just definitely. just to enjoy your whiskies, you know, that's that's thanks enough. Uh, from a from a shops perspective and a visitors team perspective, I know I can speak for myself and all the guys in the visitors team. Um, this summer has been, but totally different to any other summer than. I imagine the last 20, 30 years. It's kind of like 120, 30 years. <laughs> um, but I mean, missing, missing out on you, all you guys coming to Campbelltown and being able to do the tours and tastings and just generally having that that interaction with everyone here. Um, yeah, it's been a massive loss. Yeah, although um, um, although UK visitors can come in, they can come and see us or they could just for a period there. Um, but yeah, it's been, a, it's been a huge, huge loss. But... Um, you know, certainly do what we can. I'm beginning to feel the, the lack of travel, <laughs> uh, especially at this time of year is when you begin to get busy. And I know we will usually do a trip to Berlin, maybe go over to Cologne, um, and, and where you've got the, the Christmas markets up to Edinburgh, and I'm going to miss all the, the mud wine and gill wine and uh, it's, just, it's all about <laughs> working travel. Yeah, yeah, everything that goes along with all this is, of course, it's it's getting to chatting to people in, in different places as well, visitors. Um, but there yeah. is that bit missing. It is, it is, it is fun. hugely missing. And, you know, we, well, this is a kind of substitute, we said, but there's no real substitute to, to the festival. Yeah. Um, Frank Mack wants Lewis to do a virtual rum tasting. Virtual rum tasting, yep. Happily there, but so not tasting. That Frank back in Sweden. Yeah. Like yeah. And Ian Sutherland's asking, favourite cask in the warehouse? In the warehouse? 
Um, I like the Loch Lomond that was there because there's so much going on about it. Older, 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 older. Older. It might have, that should have been meaning just in, in the warehouse in, the, in general. Yeah. Oh, right, in that warehouse basin. Um, that's a hard one. Tough. Yeah. Couldn't draw it. My one we just bottled it anyway. What was that one? The Long Road 25. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, no, that is a really tough one, actually. That one's put on the spot. I needed to think about that one, I think. It was also Finley's favourite as well, and we bottled it on him. <laughs> I hope we bought it on. I hope someone put it on the reserve back. list. Mm-hmm. Finley put, taking up money? <laughs> 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 he never came off the bar. It's only Finley. <laughs> The tongue would be a, a, it'd be more. I don't know. There's, there's probably a few that we've tried as well, and you know they'll they'll stand up there. Um, but to say they're their favourite, I've never, as I say, one hundred percent. There's a we've actually there's a I shouldn't say too much. There's a, a real there's an older older Kalila that we've got, and it's not just because it's old. It, it's really good. Um, it's maybe about 30, 30, 39 years old. We're getting on these casks as well. There's some blends. There's some that. blends we stock up in the warehouse. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I think I think that seems to be it. I think hopefully. Yep. Yeah. It's time to go home for tea and toast. Burnt toast, yeah. buttery toast. <laughs> well, we're not going to go there. Br- lightly brown. To- 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 come back. Like toast brown. has got to be cold. <laughs> Cut diagonally, and real butter. None of your. Low fats. That's right. kind of no the toaster and then fall asleep and eat it in the morning again. That's oh, too bang. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm with you there. Yeah, well, I think that's enough. <laughs> it's cold off. Hey, well, I suppose on that note, just like to say thank you very much to everyone for, for listening and taking part in the, the festival, or especially tonight as well. Um, really hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you again for the support. Thanks to Jenna, Nathan, and the super sub himself. Yeah. Lewis, um, and yeah, uh, missed Mitch much yeah, tonight. We did, we did miss, miss we did. Mitch. I tried my best well. to fill his boots as much as I could, but yeah, yeah, but looking forward to seeing him back. Best of luck to Ronald and Finley tomorrow night with Nicole um, interviewing them exactly. with the number of questions I believe that are uh, on their way. Well, they've also got the first three days worth of questions as well because they <laughs> deflected them on. To... I think we we managed to try and answer as many questions as possible. Hopefully, it's. Oh, well, I just cherry picked ones. Out All right. <laughs> you want to see the list? Good luck to spring back tomorrow night. Final night tomorrow night, um, yeah. and I'll look forward to joining in and watching myself. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Slanjava. Slanjava.